Shabbat Shalom. So, as many of you know, this past week I was beyond privileged to have participated in the World Union for Progressive Judaism slash Artsenu Solidarity Mission to Israel. And yes, I'm a little bit jet lagged. Um, a joke aside, sitting at Hebrew Union College in Jerusalem on one of the afternoons, a familiar friend of our congregation, Rabbi Dr. Michael Mama, the other brilliant Rabbi Mama, taught us about two different etymologies of the word tikva, or hope. The first was kav, meaning a line, or in more ancient Hebrew, often indicating a thread or a string. The second was mikvah, referring to the ritual bath that we as Jews use to transform a person from one status to another, usually from being not yet Jewish to Jewish, but also at other transformational life occasions, such as weddings, divorces, childbirth, or even prior to rabbinic ordination. With these two quite different approaches in mind, and as I continue to process this experience and imagine what's next, there were a few threads that I am pulling and a few resources I am pulling now that I am home. So let's pass some of these threads, a little frayed still, but which were not unexpected. So number one is that everything is the same, but different. I'll be honest that walking through the airport was almost like walking through a dream where all of a sudden it turns from normal or even happy to the sense that something is not quite right. When you feel your body shifting uncomfortably in your sleep, but you just can't quite wake up. In a happy fog, after not having been to Israel for four years, a surprisingly happy fog given the circumstances, I rounded the corner into the entrance hall and was awakened immediately to the reality of the war as the dream turned to Technicolor. It was eerily quiet for Ben Gurion, though to be fair, it was late Friday afternoon and on the return journey was much busier. There are many signs now pointing to various shelter locations, and this would hold true throughout the mission from the hotel to the Knesset. There's this gigantic arch at the entrance of the food and shopping area with the words that we would see everywhere, and perhaps you've seen them too, machzirim or tam habayta achshav, bring them home now. Their faces line the walkway to the customs hall which brings me to the hostages. They're everywhere. Every highway, every overpass, every billboard in the many art installations of Kikara Khatufim or Hostages Square. For those who haven't been or haven't seen, there are a range of works on display from a Shabbat table set in eager anticipation of a festive meal to yellow ribbons hung on a tree to one more recent display which was made up of, of dried pita breads in various stages of, of having been eaten, 136 in total, with two of them now being taken off or the names crossed out, the numbers crossed out, thank God, following the rescue of Louise Haar and Fernando Marmon about two weeks ago. It's been almost 160 days. How absurd and how surreal. And we heard firsthand of how their families miss them so very much. They are everywhere. Then there were the pulls, the, the takeaways from this experience that I'll continue to hold sacred and which filled our cups. So let's start with the partnerships. If we're going to find any silver lining at all to the events of October 7, it's that the thread that binds Israeli and diaspora jury feels pulled far tighter than before. Israeli Jews on the street in our meetings admitted they felt a closeness to those of us in the diaspora and to this idea of peoplehood in a way that they had not previously considered. 
in what is largely thought of as a war on two fronts, the physical and the psychological. I came to understand that whilst many Jew, diaspora Jews might have realized how deeply this existence of Israel affected their security physically, they may not have realized that Israel's well-being affected their security in the sense of their emotional confidence as Jews as well. Conversely, whilst Israelis might have taken for granted that their battles are also for the physical safety of themselves and their brethren worldwide, there's a strong sense of this now, what they had not internalized was that the relationship between, was the relationship between what happens in Israel and how this impacts Jews everywhere emotionally. This led to many expressions of concern, even, even fear for us, regarding the alarmingly high levels of anti-Semitism we're, of course, seeing worldwide. Whilst it's unclear how this relationship may regress or progress in the time of that elusive day after, and whilst I may get more practical about this as we learn and explore over the time to come, know for now that we are fortunate to have many good partners in our corner, whether it's our own reform movement, in the World Zionist Organization, or elsewhere. Relatedly, the people. They were naturally the best part of the mission. The other participants who were a wonderful group from all over the world and whose deep commitment to Israel and the Jewish people in their professional and lay capacities, lay leadership capacities, is admirable. The new people we met performing small miracles all over the country, at the kibbutzim, at hospitals, in the Knesset, in embassies, in the World Zionist Organization, in our own reform movement, with compassion and care and dedication as part of the civil society who have been the ones that have stepped up to the plate in astounding ways. The old teachers I got to see even fleetingly between their classes and our group's meetings and being able to give them a quick hug. And the old friends that I was fortunate enough to see. Amidst the overall heaviness of the mission, it was a pure joy to have dinner with our Holy Blossom HUC students, Hannah Byrne Wilson and Will Brockman. And yes, it was okay to feel this happiness. And yes, it was okay to even have a bit of fun because at the end of the day, a deep pool of comfort came from one simple fact. It's still Israel. Despite everything, despite it all, despite the undeniable undercurrent of tension, it's still Israel. There were still people eating in cafes, playing volleyball on the beach, running along the waterfront, Israeli dancing on Shabbat afternoon on the boardwalk. And in classic Israeli fashion, I still ran into congregants at the Havdalah demonstration in Jerusalem in solidarity with hostage families on Saturday night. On Motzei Shabbat, I should say. There was still laughing and singing and smiling and joking the chutzpah. <laughs> so at this point, stuck between the kav and the mikvah of tikvah, between the pulling and the pulling, I was left with two different questions. So one was, why, why go at all? Why did it feel important? And I'll answer this with another story. Every day of the mission, we began with tefillah, prayer. Every day of the mission, our tefillah revolved around a different Hebrew word illustrating a theme. So on the day that we visited the south, the word was edut, or witnessing. And we talked about how when you look at the Torah scroll and you find the Shema, the letters Ayin and Dalid, which bookend those verses, are always written larger in that beautiful calligraphy. Together, that Ayin and Dalid spell aid, or witness like what you need to give testimony, like what you need to sign a ketubah, a wedding document, or a wedding contract. This desire to visit then was both testimony and contract. It will take a while for me to fully articulate, but in being at Kfar Aza, in being at the site of the Nova Festival, in hearing from the family of Yanai Kaminka, Zichrono Livracha, more about him another time when I can do his tale justice. 
For me, there was a fundamental difference between what I intellectually knew and what my heart was feeling as a Jewish person and as a Jewish leader bound to the Jewish people. Question number two was, why did Rabbi Mama name his session Anxiety and Hope? He could easily have focused on the anxiety piece and left us all with a grim outlook on the current situation, a grimness that would certainly feel fair or even accurate. Or he could have just focused on the hope aspect, giving us all what he termed a sugar-coated scenario. But that would be unrealistic. Nonetheless, Rabbi Mama's study could be distilled down to the quote that he uplifted from the Psalms, Ashrei Adam Mufached Tamid, which he translated as, happy is the man who is eternally anxious. So on one hand, we could undoubtedly continue to carry the past with us. We cannot, nor should we, hide that October 7 remains very much a part of the traumatized psyche of our Israeli brothers and sisters. They did not hide it, and that's not changing anytime soon. This is especially without the return of every single one of the hostages, dead or alive. That part was and is crystal clear. On the other hand, with that eternally Israeli, that eternally Jewish streak of optimism, in the bright sparks of normality, in the tighter partnerships between friends and colleagues, we can also look ahead with the hope that we can work together to build something that existed beforehand, whenever that day after comes and in whatever form it takes. I'll tell one final anecdote. It was quite extraordinary to find that, unprompted, anywhere we went, every Israeli we interacted with and encountered was um, unbelievably gracious in their gratitude that our group had been there to visit them. So I wanna end by channeling some of that gratitude and saying thank you to my extraordinary colleagues and to you, our extraordinary congregation, for the many ways that you enabled me to take this opportunity and for the meaningful time and space to witness and reflect. So to conclude, let us pray together for a future that is whole and that is peaceful, as illustrated in these words from Israeli poet Shaul Chanikovsky, which we sang after Kabbalat Shabbat on this mission. Laugh, oh laugh at my dreams, for I, the dreamer, laugh. Laugh because I believe in man still, for I still believe in you. I believe too in the future, though that day is not yet close at hand, it will come, peace will be uplifted, and blessing will be born from land to land. Shabbat Shalom, Shalom al-Yisrael.